Welcome. This is an experiment that uh, Stephen Open, the filmmaker behind the camera, and I are doing uh, a variation on the question and answer. We're gathering your questions from different ways, and, and I'm dis determining which ones I'm going to answer or can answer or choose to answer. Thank you for your participation. We hope that this is interesting and compelling to you. Uh, we're having a lot of fun putting it together. There's a question about how I get inspiration and ideas, and I mean, the short answer is, I have no idea. I mean, it, 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 there, it is not, it's not a technique that is predictable. Um, th there is one trick that I have and that I proselyte about is having a sketchbook on your person all the time. I have a little one, so it fits in my pocket, and if, I, if ideas occur to me, I write them down. I mean, one thing I've often said is that most ideas are bad. And so you just, you just jot them down and you decide later if they're good and, and some really great ideas come from that. Very often I just go straight to the canvas at, with some kind of a hunch and just look for the idea there. Uh, sometimes somebody says something and I mishear them, but the, the mistake that I hear is, is suggest something interesting. Ideas emerge from the chaos and accident and juxtaposition, unintended juxtapositions that life is full of, and you just try to harvest them, make little notes of them, try them, the ones that persist, uh, you, you give it a shot. You can, a nice thing about this medium is you can always change your mind and paint over it or alter it. Very often I find that the idea that really solidifies a painting is not the idea you started with, but the idea you started with leads to this, which leads to that, which leads to this, and then you've got a problem there that you solve in this way, and that then the metaphor comes home, and you never would have gotten there if you'd not started on, on, a, on an idea that really kind of had problems to start with. So. Yeah, here's a, you know, here's a, a, I just grabbed a handful, some of the, what's this from 2010. There's a, a nude with a mask, so that was sometime during the pandemic. There are lovers with masks. <laughs> This, I think I was at the Getty Museum, California, and there was a sculpture that was called Probably Aphrodite. I thought that was a really beautiful uh, title, and I've used that a few times, a painting called Probably Aphrodite. Um, you know, these are more sketches from the, from the museum. So, you know, this, is, this looks, I was gone over to the uh, Norton Simon. That's the back of somebody's head. I'm saving the naked man. That's a that is a a painting I've developed a few times where it's the woman saving the poor naked man tied up to a tree. This is an artist devoured by a terrible beast. Yeah. So this th these are these are just examples of thinking with my pencil or pen rather than you know ha tr waiting for a great idea and then illustrating it. Sometimes you just kind of look for the idea with your pen and uh, and very often it's some there's some little hint of something in one of these that ends up being developed into an idea that is uh, a, you know a better fully fledged metaphor fighting in the winter like that guy. So come up to see the show at Meyer Gallery which looks great. They do a great job of hanging it. And it's always interesting for me to see uh, the work exhibited because in my studio, I operate on the principle of painting the paintings with adequate light, but not too much light because then when they are in a gallery setting and get spot lit, they, I mean, I'm always often kind of alarmed at how bright they are. That's actually a an old master's technique. I mean, they would not paint in bright light because, of course, their paintings were often exhibited in dim settings, so they didn't want to paint them in bright light because then they would be even darker where they were. But So this, I mean, this show looks brighter to me than I remembered it while painting it. So. I'm, this is my Provo studio, and I'm working on a piece that I've been working on for a few years. Um, and I, I'm going to... Um, there have been a number of questions about um, the development of style. Frankly, I think the best way to develop style is to just do boatloads of work because there is, there is an inevitable way 
that an artist will approach a subject or a certain way that they will hold metaphor or, or their, their medium. And, and all of those things are, I think, are only discovered by just lots of work to find out how you inevitably work. And I think that too often um, artists will just adopt somebody else's way of doing it and that is shorter, and it's, it's probably more economical, but, um, but I remember when I was in school and I realized I wanted to be a painter, uh, just separate from my classes that year, I just thought, I'm going to do 100 paintings, and if I don't know what to paint, I'm just going to paint. I got used to just, when I didn't know what to paint, I would just paint, and I could watch certain things I realized, okay, this is, this is how I approach uh, an edge, and this is how I approach a, a metaphor, and, and uh, this, is how, this is how narrative creeps into my paintings when I'm not trying to insert narrative into my painting. And uh, so I, I, it, I think that it, my, my style, if you want to call it that, it is it has it has changed, but you see relationships to what I'm doing now in the work I was doing. You know, as soon as I started painting, education. I grew up living all over the world. My father was a petroleum geologist. I started uh, elementary school in Luanda, Angola, in West Africa. I uh, I continued elementary school in Bangkok, Thailand. I was there through the seventh grade and then uh, moved to uh, Texas, spent a little time in Wyoming on the way to Texas. And then um, I finished my, well, I finished high school in Islamabad, Pakistan. Uh, it, it finished early because uh, at the, during the Iran crisis, there were demonstrations in Islamabad and the embassy was burned and, and uh, our school was uh, attacked and we were uh, evacuated. And so they just graduated the seniors early. So um, then I started at the University of Utah uh, I decided there to study architecture, um, but to get an undergraduate degree in art. About this time, about, about that time, I went on a, an LDS mission to Denmark, and then decided when I came back that I would get my undergraduate degree at BYU and then go to the University of Texas at Austin for my master's degree. Is there a piece that you think teaches people something in particular that you want to be teaching? Well, um, no. Um, I don't, uh, I, 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 would, I would rather that the painting is an instigator of a conversation rather than kind of, I now want to say this. I mean, this, okay. is, this is a painting. Okay. I, I'm, uh, I, I have, you know, I have dogs. I, I, I have traditionally had black Labradors, but I now don't. I have Brittany's now, but I mean, this is a playful piece, but um, it, but it, what I, what I like to have happen in my work is even if I'm being playful or uh, laughing a little bit at the initiation of a, of a subject where the dog is giving the command, because mm -hmm. you know, we're all, that's, that's the common command we give to dogs, but, mm -hmm. but probably we would do well to take that one ourselves, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and so, uh, so the, the, and I suppose that, you know, if I were to say, if I'm trying to, I'm not trying to teach you something, but just saying, you know, maybe we should, we should take our own counsel that we're constantly throwing at the dogs. I see what you mean. And, okay. You know, slow down, calm down, um, stay, wait. I got a question from uh, the Talking Fly about my work with Joe Adams. How long we've been working, and and what I've learned. This is Joe. Joe, you want to say hello. Hello. Uh, Joe and I have been working together for more than 20 years. Uh, when I, not long after I first moved to Kanash, we were invited, I was invited to, to do a project with anyone with special needs, and I asked Joe, and he wanted to work, and we have just, we have worked uh, con almost continuously since then, a couple of breaks in between. But one thing about, uh, that I love about working with Joe is I am always trying to reach into a, a place of um, in my childhood for uh, 
imagery and for just a view of the world. And it's hard for me to get there artificially, and Joe is there. It's, it's really beautiful to watch him. If, if he wants to, and if it's important to him, then he just draws it. You know, there's not any thinking about whether or not he can. If, you, if, I, try to, if I ask him to draw something he doesn't, then he'll say he can't. But if he wants to do it, he just, he just does. And, uh, and there's, um, there's just a, a we, we've been working now together for a long time. We love each other. It's just fun. Uh, Joe introduces, his imagery introduces this kind of element of chaos into the studio that is really uh, nourishing and fruitful and beneficial and, and gets me thinking in directions I haven't thought. I get ideas for paintings from my work with Joe. He does copies of my works that are hanging around on the walls. Okay, this is Sinjin. He's the younger of the two dogs, and he's, he's patrolling, looking for squirrels and dogs walking by. This is Indy. Indy is the elder uh, of the two and the uh, alpha female of the two. And he doesn't behave quite as well as she does, but she keeps him in line. I did sculpture when I was in college a little bit. I didn't focus on it, but I've, I've wanted to get into it for a long time. And it just makes sense. Oh, that's Sinjin barking. It just makes sense for me because I, I create figures in my paintings from imagination to try to understand them in the round and so I, I started doing sculptures so I could do that, better fathom figures in my paintings. Uh, this, is a, this is a sculpture called Father and Son Dancing, uh, you know, from uh, an, an image in a painting. There's, there's this uh, little one here, these are in my house, this is called The Difficult Part and um, uh, I have a, a Larger piece here. This is uh, called "She Sings," and um, uh, I'm working on a lot more in my studio. But these are kind of to help me understand the figure better. So the question is, what has oil paint taught me? And I will admit that I have never articulated an answer to that question, but I have. In receiving the question, I have strong feelings about it. When I started out as an art student, I thought I wanted to be a potter. And I went and lived with Joe and Lee Benyon down in Spring City to work in Joe's pottery. And, um, and now Joe and Lee tell this story differently. Lee is a, uh, she's a wonderful painter, and Joe is a fabulous potter. Um, Joe and Lee remember this differently than I do, but I, I've my memory is that one night at dinner, after dinner, talking late into the night, they just kind of said, uh, not really a potter, are we, Brian? <laughs> you know? And, uh, and I, I, have, I was kind of coming to the same conclusion. And Lee said, well, why, why don't you come to my studio tomorrow and mess around with my paint box? And I'd never touched oil paint before that. And, uh, and it was, it, it's not that the first painting was uh, was good, that that painting doesn't exist anymore, um, or even the first paintings. It's not that they were good, but immediately the, the smell, the feel, the, the experience with the substance was, uh, it, it, it felt like we had found each other and we were going to, we were going to play together. Oil paint, the way that I use it, has I, I, to answer the question about what it has taught me is that you, maybe this is true of any medium, but anyway, I'll give it a shot. You have to let it do what it does. And there are certain ways that I apply it. I'll, I'll paint a glaze and let the glaze get sticky and then paint on top of that, and that'll tend to kind of, before that, the wet paint on top, the thick wet paint on top dries, it kind of cracks open a little bit, and, but not in ways that I have ever really been able to control or manipulate. Sometimes it makes a lot of little cracks, sometimes big cracks, but the, it, it, has, it has been part of the whole artistic experience of you've got to, you've got to let the process make a lot of the decisions. And when I have tried other media, I, 
I've had some success. I, I really love to draw, and th there are other media that I enjoy. Sculpture, I really enjoy. But, but oil painting, there's a particular, uh, it, it feels uh, like a, a particular kind of collaboration where I'm not making all the decisions. The pain is making some of the decisions. And uh, that, that feels like an important thing for me to have learned from oil paint. Louise asks a question about, um, and maybe others have too or will, about imitation. If it, you know, if it troubles me or bothers me or what I think about um, seeing artists imitate my work. And um, I, I will admit that it, it, it used to trouble me uh, a lot. Um, and and I'll, I'll tell you a big reason why. One is that, um, first, well, first of all, there is no artist that is not influenced by other artists. We are all a salad of, of multiple influences. And often what I say is just make sure your salad has more than one ingredient, you know. Um, and part of the, well, there are a couple of reasons for that. And one of the main ones is that it is easier to bypass your own sacred, inevitable journey towards your particular and inevitable work by adopting someone else's. And, that, and the tragedy is, is then we lose yours. However, it, it is easier. You can adopt the, the, the patterns and techniques of, of an individual artist and, and jump right into a work that, the, a body of work that feels more developed because someone else has developed it. And, and I think that, I think you robbed yourself and others of what uh, may have happened otherwise. Uh, what I determined after a while as far as people buying other people's works because they're cheaper and they you know, feel like they, if they don't discern the difference. Um, what I decided is my main obligation, unless you're copying my subject and, then, and the works are registered and my lawyer will talk to you, I suppose, but, um, but uh, is it's just an, it is just an invitation for me to be awesome because uh, I am generating these works from here and the people who are, who are copying me are generating them from here. And, 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 and although artwork needs to be smart, you've got to lead with your gut. And if you're imitating, that pushes the whole process up into the head and away from the gut. And I feel like that is a, a shame to do that. I just want to make you aware of there are a couple of books about my work. This one is from 2002. Uh, this one much more recently, just a couple of years ago. This one's called Kershisnik, Painting from Life. Um, it was published by uh, the, the, the Guild and is um, out of Minnesota. Uh, it's mostly available from me or from my galleries or uh, I find them on uh, eBay, too. Sometimes you can get a real bargain. I won't sell it to you that cheap, but, but eBay sometimes will sell them pretty cheap. This is uh, newer from the, uh, the Unicorn Press published it. Uh, it is available from the University of Chicago Press. And it's called Brian Kershisnik, Looking for Something, Selected Paintings. And uh, anyway, both of these are, are the paintings go way back in these uh, um, Almost, I mean, well, back a couple decades, but um, it's, a, it's a good way to uh, become familiar with my work, or if you like my work, see plenty of examples of it. I, I'm, I'm happy with both of these publications. And so the, the question is uh, if there are, that there's, there seems to be a, a repeated uh, idea of of mystery in the paintings. I, I actually hope that that's almost always an ingredient. I, I, as I've said many times before, I prefer to go to a canvas with a question mark rather than an exclamation point. This is not so much a question, but um, I am also kind of amazed and intrigued and, and curious and uh, about the, uh, this painting called um, Invisible Burden just the realization that no matter how bad you think you may have it at the moment, 
almost everyone around you is carrying something that you can't see. And it's helpful for me if, when, if I do feel particularly burdened, just to remember that everyone around me is probably carrying something uh, maybe even worse, maybe even a lot worse than, in some cases, in some instances, I know something of the burden, or I know something of a burden, but there's, but uh, that, that, that mysterious aspect of being human is uh, intriguing and engaging to me and heartbreaking and there's a question about um, that well a comment that my paintings can be interpreted in many ways and um, uh, and asking and the question is do I ever share what I mean in paintings and and I would rather say that I am happy to talk to you about my impressions of a painting. I don't consider myself the last word on what a painting means. The fact that a painting can be interpreted in many ways uh, it is, in, on my mind, a strength. If um, I feel like artwork should be lived with, and if we're living with it, it should continue to uh, inspire conversation and thought, and uh, question marks are better at that than exclamation points. So. It, I don't hide, there, there are actually certain paintings that I do not say why I painted it, uh, partially because it, those, some of those paintings have tapped so much into the, a universal response to life that if I tell you what I meant when I painted it, it'll start to close down the conversation. So there, I, I will just simply say it, it, it was very meaningful to me, but the meaning of this painting is the meaning that you are deriving from. This painting is about you. So I, I, I feel like maybe what I have to say about my paintings is interesting, but it's, it, it's not the final word, and it needs to not shut down the conversation. And uh, so. There are uh, a lot of people that uh, participate in my work. Of course, a lot of my ideas emerge from conversations with my friends and family. And, um, and my wife, Faith, who's also uh, she, she does a lot of things, including uh, painting and drawing. It's, uh, it's wonderful, and particularly on a project we're working on now, uh, where she comes, has come down and is coming down again with me this weekend to help transfer these smaller studies onto these really large canvases. These paintings will be 17 feet tall. And, and it's, it is, it's rare. The, most of the work I do in the studio is fairly solitary, but it's really beautiful when, uh, uh, when she can come. I, I, I mean, I would be glad to have her assist me a lot, but she has her own work to do. But uh, to have somebody kind of there for uh, the generation of the work, uh, it can't just be anybody there. I mean, it's, it, it works partially because uh, she's my spouse, but it just, there, there's something kind of, I mean, don't mean to whine, but something kind of lonely about the production of artwork. It is, it's, a, it's essentially a, a solitary thing, but it's been really beautiful to have her there and participating and, and kind of on the, on the inside of, of decisions, aesthetic decisions, and pushing back on, no, I don't think that arm is in the right place. And, and anyway, it, it's, uh, I really appreciate uh, her uh, genius in, uh, in influencing my work. And, her help. <laughs> do you have any? Uh, do you have any comments? Please cut all of this part out. <laughs> Please cut all of this part out. Yeah. Even that part. Yeah. Well, no, that was very sweet. Thank you. There are uh, inevitably and unavoidably a lot of questions about paintings that I've done in the past. Obviously, you haven't seen any of the paintings that I am doing now or will do in the future. And I just, I, I preemptively uh, apologize a little bit that um, I don't spend as much time answering all those questions about past paintings because m my mind is very much on what is happening right now or, or, and even more so on what I intend to do with the paintings I'm working on now or paintings I haven't done yet. Um, there's a, uh, Degas has a beautiful uh, quote about, for an artist, it's, it's never about what they've done, it's about what they are going to do. 
And, uh, you, you know, when people say to me, you know, so what is your favorite painting? I, I, I say, oh, I, I, I haven't painted it yet. <laughs> I'm still working on that. And um, so uh, if I don't get to your question about a past painting, I apologize. And I, and I assume that it, it will eventually come up or hopefully I'll meet you and I can talk to you about it. But, uh, but if, I, if I don't get to it, that, that's, that's a little bit of an explanation as to why that might be. Cats and dogs. Oh, I am a dog person. I have almost always had dogs with me in the studio. They have been uh, an important part of the development. Uh, they've been present in the development of my work. I, I, I just feel like there is some cosmic connection between people and dogs. Uh, cats as well. I've, I am not as much of a cat person. Uh, I like cats. Uh, once someone explained to me that dogs have owners and cats have staff, you know, uh, that we are kind of, they own us. Uh, but I, I've loved cats and loved being on their staff. And I've actually been staff of my dogs too. I'm, uh, my wife accuses me of being a dog enabler and I plead guilty. But um, I, I just, I, there are, Things that they're aware of that I don't see. There are ways that they love that are brilliant and there are things that annoy them that are fascinating. And they introduce an element of joy and chaos into the whole life experience that are, that's an important part of art making and life observation. So dogs and cats and horses. I, oh, I, I, a cowboy once told me when I lived in Kenosha, he said, you get two horses and one dog. Talking about in the course of your life that, uh, that you will have a connection to two horses and, and, and a profound connection to one dog. <laughs> I thought that was very beautiful. And I, yeah, I, I don't know that I agree with the cowboy's math, but but it's interesting to me that there are certain animals that are just, uh, yeah, the connection is, is not describable and is wonderful and difficult and beautiful. Laura asks a question about um, the, the relationship between um, different disciplines that I enjoy. Uh, particularly, she was wondering about my work as a painter and, and my work as a musician. And I, I don't think I have a really good, clear, um, elegant answer for that. I, they don't feel like massively different territories. I have guitars in all the places where I work so that I can stop painting and play music every once in a while. It's kind of a way of shifting gears into something else so I can see the paintings better. And um, sometimes I'm just... I'm just kind of, my eyes are kind of burned out and so I just have to play for a while. Um, I write music. Um, that comes very, very differently than painting. I, I make lots and lots of paintings every year. I don't write songs every year. And when, when I do write a song, it tends to kind of intrude on everything and I stop painting and I, I just work on that song for days sometimes. And so maybe it's good that they don't come too quickly. But uh, I have the advantage in my music of it not being my livelihood so I can just enjoy the the fun parts and in painting and sculpture it is my livelihood and so there's there's stables to be mucked out and there are deadlines and and commitments and uh, there's I have in paradoxically I have a, a job that I love and so I have to be careful to preserve the love part of it because the, the further into it I go, the more threatened the just enjoyment fun part is, and the better I have to get at establishing certain boundaries and, and, uh, and giving myself uh, an, a time and space to uh, enjoy things. I'm always working on projects that, um, that are, will not enter the market, that are just to explore or experiment or, or give away and uh, because I, I have to make sure that everything that I do is not solely determined by, um, uh, driven by 
market. The rest of the work, the work that is for sale, is improved by working on projects that are, that are not. So yeah, I don't, I don't know the relationship. I, I, I have band practice here in my studio, every, uh, which is going to happen later on tonight. And uh, that is a, I, it's a part of my week that I really, really need. It's good to be with those musicians. And, uh, that's one thing that's very, very different. Uh, painting is more solitary. Uh, and music, although I often play alone, but, mu but w music with my band is, there's a certain kind of connection with other humans that is one of my favorite parts of that whole ordeal. So for more uh, resources or information, by all means visit my uh, website at kershisnik.com. I am uh, sporadically uh, active on Instagram. Um, I have a YouTube channel uh, and, um, and I appreciate those of you that have uh, submitted questions. Sorry that we couldn't get to all of them, but uh, Thank you, and uh, come again. I I'll sing a song here for my dog to sing. Is there anybody there who knows me? Is there anybody there who knows? <laughs> also, uh, my band is Tiny Bicycle Parade, available on all streaming services. So. Sinjin doesn't sing on the albums, but... He sings at practices.